I like to think that his greatest claim to fame is that he wrote beautifully rather than that he lived a flashy, uh, exciting life. But I think a lot of people are attracted by the lifestyle and the sort of wildness of the 20s. As you're driving along 355, you may not realize that resting beneath an oak tree in St. Mary's Cemetery is one of America's most celebrated authors, F. Scott Fitzgerald. Whenever you go there, there's always something that's been left there by some recent visitor. I think a novel like The Great Gatsby is perhaps one of the most beautifully written American novels. Jackson Breyer serves as president of the F. Scott Fitzgerald Literary Society. He also taught English at the University of Maryland for 41 years. One of the themes of that book is, is it possible to achieve the American dream? Well, that's no different in terms of its relevance today than it, is, than it was in 1925 when he wrote the book. September 24th marks what would have been F. Scott Fitzgerald's 125th birthday. There's a fairly steady stream of people who visit that gravesite and they leave things like bottles of wine or flowers or notes or stones on the grave. St. Mary's Cemetery is always busy around Fitzgerald's birthday. Visitors stop by to pay respect to the great American writer who literally shares his grave with his wife, Zelda. Their daughter, Scotty, lies at their feet, where they are surrounded by other family members. So you have in the cemetery uh, five generations of Fitzgeralds and Keys and Robertsons and Scotts, um, the, the general family name. Eileen McGuckian, a historian and preservationist, has spent decades studying Rockville and its ties to Fitzgerald. He didn't live in Rockville, um, but he grew up knowing about Rockville, coming to Rockville, uh, spending summers with his parents and grandparents. His father's family lived in the Rockville area since the 1800s. The grandparents lived on the farm when uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald was growing up. Today, you would think their farm is in Gaithersburg. In fact, it's near where the National Institutes of uh, Standards and Technology, NIST, is. So they attended St. Mary's because it was the closest Roman Catholic Church. So they came here and they buried uh, their loved ones here. He had a great fondness for his father's uh, side of the family. So when he died, Zelda and his daughter uh, decided to bury him in Rockville because they felt that's really what felt like the most appropriate place. Like many artists before him, Fitzgerald died young. He was only 44 years old when he passed away in 1940. I think the death certificate specifically says a, a heart attack, but he was drinking heavily. His body was shipped from Hollywood to Pumphrey's funeral home in Bethesda. The Fitzgeralds hoped he could be buried alongside his family at St. Mary's, but many believe the church declined the request. There's no record of the church saying, no, you cannot be buried here. Um, it's pretty well known that he was writing what the church at that time uh, would have called blasphemous um, novels. Instead, the family had him buried a mile and a half down the street at Rockville Cemetery. His funeral was very small. I mean, there were probably no more than 10 people. Eight years later, Zelda died in a fire and was buried in the same plot, atop Fitzgerald. It wasn't until after Fitzgerald died that The Great Gatsby gained critical acclaim. But in 1975, it was the women of Rockville who played a pivotal role in Fitzgerald's final resting place. The Women's Club of Rockville um, approached Scotty and asked if they could beautify his grave at Rockville Cemetery. And Scotty said, you know, he really wanted to be buried with the rest of his family at St. Mary's. So the Women's Club, um, Civic Advisory Improvement Committee, and Scotty all approached St. Mary's. Um, and uh, the answer was, yes, of course, you could, we could move him. The diocese apparently uh, was willing to accept him, I suspect, because his reputation had uh, grown in those years. He was no more a Catholic in 1975 than he had been in 1940. 
After 35 years, F. Scott and Zelda were finally reinterred in St. Mary's with the rest of the Fitzgerald family. And that's the stone that was moved from Rockville Cemetery. And then Scotty had this horizontal stone made to add to it. And what she added were the last lines from The Great Gatsby. So we beat on boats against the current, borne back ceaselessly into the past. Reporting in Rockville, Deirdre Byrne, my MCM. If you find our videos useful to you, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel.